A Slayer Merry Christmas, everybody. Joined today by John Armstrong, the acting principal of Lauren High School, also Northern Ireland Head Teacher of the Year. So, John, what took you into teaching? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I'm in my 30th year, guys, I've told you already. When I was at school, I had to be honest, I wasn't the best behaved boy. And some of my pupils might have a wee laugh at that, but I used to be a bit of an egg. Any stories? No, I'm not going to tell you <laughs> any stories. <laughs> but I used to get in trouble quite often, and I would have to say I also got put out of class a few times. But it was usually for just playing pranks and, and keeping going and, and annoying teachers. It wasn't for any pure badness. But whenever I eventually went to Strand Mellis College, some of my old teachers had a laugh. They couldn't believe that John Armstrong was going to be a teacher. But later on, Gary, it was a way back when I'd finished my A-levels, a friend and I, we made a bit of a mess of A-levels and we hadn't worked as hard as we should have done. And, and at that time, they were looking for people to join the Hong Kong police. And we both had our application forms. We were thinking of applying and they would have taken you out there and dear knows where I would have ended up. And then all of a sudden, a week or so before we applied, I got a letter in from Strand Mullis offering me a place. So in some ways, I drifted into it. But I would have to say there's a history of teaching. My, my grandmother, my granny Armstrong, was a... Uh, she was nearly the principal in Ballyboley. She was a, the sort of senior lady of the school. They only had two teachers. But in those days, it was, it was more often the, the man became the headmaster. But uh, my granny Armstrong, I think she's still remembered fondly by people who live up around that area, Ballyboley Primary School, and they had their anniversary, I think, last year as well. So it's in my genes, I suppose. And I've never looked back. And you spent most of your career in Lauren? I've been there since 1979. Uh, as a teacher and obviously was a, a pupil there starting in, I think it was 68. But whenever I reached third year, it, it, it was Greenland in those days, the school was so full of pupils, they made the whole of fourth year go down to Larne Tech. So I finished my secondary level education, if you like, at Larne Tech, which I also remember fondly the old building. I th- think it was such a shame when they, they levelled that, but many a fond memory I had in there as well. So I'm an old tech person as well. The architecture was so of its era, wasn't it? Oh, well, of course it was. And I mean, our own school's 50 year old. I'm getting a plug in here, Gary, just was, in case I, the minister's listening. I was actually <laughs> walking past past your school the other day uh, because because you are our neighbours virtually here, right. and uh, I was thinking it all seems so big years ago, and now it doesn't seem as big as it did. Well, that's because you've grown a wee bit. Yeah, yeah, in, in all <laughs> ways, unfortunately. But it's a, it's a 50 year old building. And we have worked darn hard this past couple of years. Well, we always have. We've we've known it's a good. It's looking school. good though. Yeah, and you should come up for a visit, Gary, and take a walk around. I, I had some primary school heads in school this morning. I invited them in before Christmas. Some of them couldn't make it. It's a busy time. I probably chose my time wrong. But uh, just to let them see, because there's a perception and has been for many years, disappoints me sometimes a negative view of of Lauren High School. And yet there are thousands of youngsters and, and the backbone of this town have gone through our school and many walks of life all through the town and, and occupations. There and is professions. there is still that perception some people would hold, but it yeah. seems to have changed a lot. I think we've made, we've made an impact the past two years. When I took over as acting head, it was my chance to get the reins and, and make changes. And uh, I wanted to improve the image. And to be honest, I, I tried to get us into paper every week. Everything that moved in school, anything positive we got, publicised just to promote the school um, I wanted to raise the self esteem of our pupils that's the biggest battle, Our kids, if you tell kids long enough that they're failures and they're no good they start to believe that themselves and they let themselves go, I've drilled it into them in assembly and, and every day I go around the corridors around classes, they're as good as anybody we've, we've improved the uniform we've made a few changes, I, I have noticed that I've yeah, noticed well, that the, the uniform looks so much tidier, well uh, 10 years ago they looked like a ragtag band coming down the street, <laughs> now maybe they still do when they get out that gate they might change but I can assure you in school that the uniform standard is, of, is very high we maintain it, there's respect shown um, we've made so many changes in the school this past year, we've changed all the furniture we've uh, decorated the, the, the classrooms, new display boards painted as much of the school as we could. I've been lucky and had a wee bit of money to spend, but we've raised the self-esteem of our youngsters. They feel good about themselves. I think they they walk a wee bit taller, Gary, and they're proud of their school, and I try and instill that in them. Sometimes they let me down. Sometimes I get calls from, from people. Sometimes I get calls when people have even mixed up, and, and it's not our school at all. But we like to respond. Regularly, I send groups of kids out voluntarily with staff into the local area around us to lift litter, to help out. And, and, and do things that we can and, and that helps as well if someone rings me I try and deal with it or I'll go and see them if I can personally myself or I'll even take a child with me with their permission 
to apologise. And you're also working closely with other schools now. That's the other aspect of it. When I was a boy in this town, Gary, long time ago, no one would have dreamt what we've achieved nowadays. We're in our third year of collaboration with St Congos, and some lovely youngsters there too, good kids, and we've been collaborating in classes for, this is our third year as I've told you, Kids come back and forth all day long, by minibus, taxi, whatever. I don't even bat an eyelid now. Some Congress kids will walk past my corner and I just view them as my own pupils as well. And I'm quite sure the same happens with Cathy Gormley over in some Congress. It's fantastic. No one can quantify that, Gary, the impact in this community, but it's bound to have some sort of positive effect. Because they're bound to be socialising and so on outside of school. Even if they're not, Gary, at least they, they can nod each other in the street and know, well, that's so-and-so, I'm in the same class as him. And, and it's bound to be good for human, uh, for harmony in the town, I feel. And then it, it's been expanded this year. We spent last year talking with Lauren Grammar School, and now they have come into the collaboration as well, as some other schools outside Lauren. But for the first time ever, some of my best pupils can go to Lauren Grammar, do an A-level, without having to buy a Lauren Grammar uniform. They'll go over there, do one A-level, they'll come back over again to me during the day to continue A-levels in my school, and they're my pupils, and vice versa. So it's great to see Lauren Grammar also coming into that. And you've uh, you've something special coming up with St Congos over Christmas. Well, yeah, we have our, our annual carol service. We've been doing that for years. Each school takes turns. So this year it's St Congos turn. Uh, Wednesday night, half seven, carol service. And anyone's welcome to come along to that. It's a joint choir, pupils from both schools. Sounds, sounds fantastic. Anything else coming up next year? Uh, let me think now. Off the top of my head, I don't know, Gary. It's just all <laughs> I'll going. I'll put you yeah. in the spot there. Oh, well, you have can, the can I phone a friend? You, you certainly can. You can phone Sally. We'll talk about Sally. The, uh, I hope Sally's working hard up there Sally and not lying uh, Sally, who's 67, apparently. <laughs> uh, the hardest working uh, school administrator in uh, Lauren, I'm sure. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> well, John, thanks for coming in today. Well, thank you, Gary. We'll thanks play, for having we'll me. We'll play some Eagles then for Sally. Fantastic. If you have any garage music or hip-hop, I'd rather have that, to be honest. I'm, I'm not into this old foggy stuff. I, I, I like to get on down and, and go to the odd uh, rave. I, I can't believe that <laughs> somehow. I can't believe that. All the best, John. Thank you, Gary. P&O Irish Sea, a proud sponsor of the Chain FM Afternoon Show. P&O would like to wish all listeners a happy Christmas. Gary Andrews. Gary Andrews. Chain FM 106.3, Adele, cold shoulder. Coming up towards 3 o'clock now. It wasn't John Armstrong. So nice this afternoon. Great achievement, that, though, isn't it? Do text us today, 07 541 605 850. Lots of great music between 9 and 6 o'clock. Do keep your emails and uh, text messages coming in. Taking us up to news. Monaco, what do you want from me? Sha-la-la. 